previously. <coughs> and so we go. Hello friends, my name is Renee, and welcome back to Professor Layton in the Curious Village. We are getting close to the end, so let's walk up these stairs here and see where we go. What the fuck are you doing here? How did you get here? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'll talk to you in a second. I need to find some hair coins. Are you also... Okay. Ah, konnichiwa, amigos. I'm so glad to see other people. I thought we'd be wandering this place forever. Hey, how did you get in here? There's no way you solved all those puzzles. Je ne sais pas. It just happened. Un momento. I'm wondering the sooner... Un momento, I'm wondering the sooner... Sewers, the next moment I know, I'm... Next thing I know, I'm here. I... Like, I take it this isn't the local hotspot my guide but promised it would be. How curious. So where is it you'd like to go? If you go down these stairs, you can return to the village proper. Just make sure you don't fall into the large hole by the entrance. Ah, Zizi. That should Shishi. Shishi. That says Shishi. That should be enough information to get me there. But may I ask one more favor? All this talk of stairs is reminding me of a Nazo I know. Answer it for me, per favor. Haven't heard the training Shishi since I worked in freaking Kyoto. <coughs> Oof, <coughs> choking on my tea. You have business on the eighth floor of a ten-story building. It took you forty-eight seconds to make your way from the first floor to the fourth. If you keep moving at the same speed, how long will it take you to reach the eighth floor from the fourth? Forty-eight seconds. <coughs> hmm. Oh. Huh. So from the first floor to the fourth is three floors. We start on the first floor, and it's second, third, fourth, right? Took you 48 seconds. But the fourth floor to the eighth floor is four floors, because you're fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So, if it took you 48 seconds to get three floors, but you can't divide 48 by three. Or can you? Hold on a second. Can you? Yeah, because 24 divided by 3 is 8. So 48 divided by 3 is 16. So that means it should take you 16 more seconds. So 58, 59, 60, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Should take you 66 seconds. Luke, here's my answer. No? Did I do my math wrong? I think I did my math wrong. Hold on. I think I did my math wrong. Okay. So calculator, 48 divided by 3 is 16. So I did that right. So 48 plus 16. 64, not 66, dumbass. Well. I can't math. <sighs> there are three flights. Yep, okay, you're right. Going from first to fourth floor means you're climbing a total of three flights of stairs. Going from the fourth to eighth floor means you'll have to go up an additional four, flight, four flights of stairs. I'm gonna be really tired, apparently. Grazie. Now I'm on my way back to the village. What a strange fellow. Professor... Do you suppose that man is human? 
I believe so. He's an odd one, though, isn't he? I've never seen an explorer with such a poor sense of direction. Stranger still is how he entered Saint Mystery. I don't think even he knows how he did it. Perhaps his presence yesterday was for another reason why Bruno felt compelled to hide the crank. Okay. Anything else in here that I can click for puzzle coins? Or, um, hint coins. Alright. That's very obviously what you want me to click, and I will. But first... Come on, I know there's one here somewhere. Fuck it. Click the thing. Hmm. <laughs> Seems that we face up another puzzle lock, Luke. Oh, I meant to ask you about a run with that explorer. It distracted me. How did Simon, you know? All in good time, my boy. First, we need to solve this puzzle here. It looks like to, looks to be quite the challenge. Puzzle 97. Princess in a box. Tired of leading a sheltered life, the, this princess is trying to escape her castle. Armed guards, however, are blocking her path. <laughs> Holy fuck. Welcome home. <laughs> Slide the box out of the way to move the red one to the X to the right. Her freedom depends on you. Can you do it? Oh, Jesus. Now I can move this here and this here. Move this over. Move you down. Aha. Whoops. Okay. There. Did it. It was really long, but I did it. Every puzzle has an answer. Wonderful. It's a classic example of a sliding puzzle. I'm so bad at sliding puzzles. There we are. The door should open now. <laughs> Amazing as always, uh, Professor. Now about Simon, what exactly happened in the mansion? Did Don Paolo really mer <coughs> make off with Simon? I'd say so. This is just my theory, mind you, but I think Don Paolo followed us into the manor. That's when he met Simon or came across him, as the case may be. I suspect Simon had already collapsed when Don Paolo found his body sprawled on the floor. Just like with Raymond. So maybe Simon had also stopped functioning properly, huh? I guess all the robots break down sooner or later, and when they do, Bruno comes to collect them. Then he fixes them here in the basement of the tower. Oh, do you suppose the noises from the tower are actually the sounds of Bruno's machines working? I think you're spot on, Luke. That must be why people began to associate the disappearances with the roaring from the tower. Don't forget that despite his particular peculiar experience, Don Paolo is a scientific genius. Therefore, he probably realized why Simon had stopped moving. If it weren't for the golden apple, Don Paolo likely would have left St. Mysterio right then. I'm sure he was eager to take the robot apart and learn how it worked. And that must be when he decided to disguise himself as the Spectre Chelmy, right? That rat made up the whole murder story on the spot. That's not the whole mystery, Luke. 
mystery. Come, Luke, we must keep moving. I'll explain the rest as we go. Cool, and we solved a mystery. How did that solve Raymond? I don't understand. Hold on. <sighs> as a robot was several years on him, it was only natural that Raymond would break down sooner or later. He was quickly taken in for a repair and then promptly returned to the village, blissfully unaware that he had just undergone a tune-up. The loud noise emanating from the tower was the whirring of machines Bruno used to repair the robots of St. Mystere. It's been several years since the creation of St. Mystere. Maintenance becomes necessary more frequently as machines age, hence the reports of increased noises at night from the villagers. Oh, okay. Awesome. Keep moving. What are you doing here? I don't like you. Can I just move past you, please? I don't want to talk to you, you crazy old woman. Uh, fine. Hmm. Fancy meeting you here, dearie. Would you like to try a little puzzle I made up? How on earth did she get up here? Hmm, she must have overtaken us at some point. Funny, I didn't even see the old girl pass us. Hmm, quit whispering amongst yourselves and try out my puzzle already. It's a home dinner. I really don't like you, woman. Card order. Oh, no. <sighs> You've placed one joker and four aces with different suits face down on the table. Use the hints below to determine the position for each card. The club is to the immediate right of the heart. Um, okay. Neither the diamond nor the joker is next to the spade. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the club. Neither the diamond nor the spade is next to the heart. Okay, so the club is to the immediate right of the heart. So let's put this here and here. Neither the diamond nor the joker is next to the spade. So, put that there. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the club. Hmm. So neither of those can be next to the club. Not next to the spade or the club. How? Oh, neither the diamond or the spade is next to the heart. Okay. The diamond or the joker is next to the spade. Neither the diamond nor the joker is next to the spade. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the club. Neither the diamond or the spade is next to the heart. So it goes like this. <clears throat> Luke, here's my answer. Every puzzle has an answer. Oh, excuse me. Excellent. Only a strong grasp of principles of logic can get you through a puzzle like this. The principles of logic. Oh, yes, that's the answer, all right. Well, then, I guess I'll be off. Come visit me sometime. Principles, principles of logic, Sam. Principles of logic. I guess she followed us in here. School? I guess. <laughs> school, of school, of school, of school of logic. All right. I think we're almost to the top. Maybe. Can I have more hint coins, or am I out? Okay. I don't know. Alright, let's see here. Just like I thought, there's another puzzle locking this door. It looks really difficult, Professor. Look, my boy, haven't you learned by now? No puzzle is without an answer. Now we simply must find that answer. Here, allow me. What's this puzzle? If it's another sliding ball. Three, 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 three is the name of this puzzle. Okay. I think I got this. Use each number, each of the numbers, one through nine, exactly once to fill in the blanks to complete the equation. All right, I can do that. This is going to be pretty easy. So, nine minus six is three. Um, let's see, four minus one is three. Does it matter which order it goes in? Hmm. Eight minus five is three. Oh, it does. Ooh. Okay, hold on. No. Hold on. Shh. 
Stop helping me. Okay. So... Minus nine is three, and then eight minus five is three, <coughs> seven <coughs> is four is three, and then six minus three is three. There we go. What? I'm sorry, but that was right. Wait, don't move anything. Oh, nope. Three's got to be at the top. No, there's five threes and there's four spaces. See? I told you not to help me. Nine minus six is three, eight minus five is three, seven minus four is three, but two minus one is not three. What do you got for me? See, at its core, this is a simple math problem, so if you're just going to have to work it out if you want to solve it, however, there's a way to cut down the amount of work you need to do. Think about each number first and last digits for each. The first and last digits for each number, the leftmost digit, the leftmost digit in the upper number is four. Oh. Okay, so let's just restart this. Put four up here. So... 40, 4 minus 1 is 3, but that doesn't really help me. Got to borrow a number, that's what's happening. Alright, so, 1 minus 2, 41 minus 2 is not 33, but, no, that doesn't work, okay. <coughs> Forty four minus nine is thirty three, though. But I can't do forty four. Wait, no, forty two minus nine is thirty three. Okay, so now the rest of them just have to fall in order. two possible solutions, but some digits are located in the same place for both answers. For example, for both solutions, 7 is the leftmost, leftmost digit at the bottom number. Really? So, 33. Then I'd have to borrow one from there. No, that doesn't make sense at all. Because 16 minus 7 is 9. What about... Hello. What minus 7 is 3? 8, 9, 10. 10 minus 7 is 3, but that doesn't help me. the last hint you're going to get for the top number going from left to right the first three digits are four one and two 
Um, and two. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Do you have a ten? No. Got a five. Forty-one. Oh, maybe I have to borrow from here too. That would make sense because that would make that a ten. Oh. So that would be 12 minus 9 is 3. Okay. And then I can do the rest. 8 and 5. And then 6 and 3. Okay, cool. That makes sense. That should do it. Correct. That's right. There are two different configurations. Did you manage to figure out both? No, I figured out one. Creativity, creativity and persistence. Luke, as long as you have these, no puzzles belong beyond your reach. Professor, I was just thinking. Do you remember that picture we found in Lady Dahlia's room? The one of the Baron's late wife, Violet, holding a child who appears to be young Flora? Of course. That's the one. It's uncanny how much Lady Violet looked like Dahlia. I suppose Baron Reinhold's journal entries were talking about Lady Dahlia. Sharp thinking, my boy. I believe it went something like this. The craftsmanship of it is simply remarkable. It reminds me of... Yep. We've done this already. That's the one that tipped me off. Professor, do you suppose Lady Dahlia is actually a robot built to resemble Lady Violet? Entirely possible, maybe even probable given the circumstances. But if so, what a terribly sad story these entries tell. Do you remember what the next entry said? <coughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. The Baron arranged for the construction of a robot for Flora that was identical to his late wife, but living with a machine that was so similar to his wife must have been too much for him. Thus, he decided to change the robot's personality so Lady Dahlia was created. As she was originally created as a mother figure, she must have gone through a confusing transition. And professor, do you suppose these robots feel sadness? Honestly, I'm not quite sure, but I have a feeling that each of these robots has something not unlike a human heart. What do you think? I, I hope that they do. Yep, and now Lady Dahlia has been solved. Awesome. We're getting there. So close. So close. It's revealed that Lady Dahlia is a robot originally constructed to resemble and behave like the Baron's late wife in every way imaginable. The Baron commissioned the construction of Lady Dahlia as a way to confront his com comfort his daughter. Unfortunately, it had the opposite effect. All right. How far am I from the end? How far am I up the tower? Oh, there's a hint coin. Okay, you know what? This is gonna be a short one, but I'm gonna go ahead and end that episode there. Uh, there's a lot of people home and a lot of a lot of noise. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. Everyone signing out. Bye.